Welcome to part 2 of caching. Today we are talking about the remember forever function and observers and how we can utilize these to handle caching in a very unique way. Before we begin I want you to smash the subscribe button, annihilate the like button and let's get started. Let's say that we have a block and the block comes out in a very infrequent manner. So time based can be kind of iffy but you also don't want to permanently store it and have the user miss content or have the blogger needing to actually manually clear. So let's get started. So let's make our block model. We pass in the M for migration, C for controller and F for factory. Okay, let's set up the migrations real quick. A block might have a title. And let's add a body as well. And we'll set up the factory. This will allow us to generate a lot of fake blocks so we can actually have data to work with. For the title, we just want two random words. And pass in true so it returns as text. For the body, we just want a fake sentence. Now we go into the seed folder. What we need to do is call the factory method on the block model. And let's create five of those. Next, we just run the php artisan migrate command with the seed flag. And look, we have five blocks with some fake data. Next, let's go into our app HTTP controllers and block controller. Let's make a method called index. We will grab all the blocks. And we import the block class. And for now, let's just dump them. Next, let's set up a route. Let's go down and set up a route for the block. And finally, let's visit that URL. And we get all the five blocks that we expected here. But since we know all about caching, returning all the blocks can be very bad. So let's set up some caching. We're going to call the cache helper method and we're going to call the method remember forever. It takes in a key and the second parameter is just an anonymous function that resolves in case there's nothing found in the cache. And everything works like before. However, let's see the pitfall of this. So first we're going to boot up PHP artisan tinker. Let's create a new blog post. So as you see here, we have a sixth blog post now, meaning let's refresh now, but it doesn't show. If we call PHP artisan cache clear, now it shows, but we don't want to do this manually. So how can we resolve that? This is where I like using observers. If you have something with like very infrequent update rates and you really want to just cache it for performance issues, if you want to make sure that the cache is just cleared if any change happens, like a new blog post comes out, a blocks get updated, anything, then observers is a really good tool. Let's make our first observer by typing php artisan make observer. Laravel will now create a new folder called observers inside the app folder. So before we start, we need to make sure that our application is actually going to use this class. So to do that, we need to go into providers, app service provider, and inside the boot method, we're going to call the model, which is block, and let's import it here at the top. And we need to call the observe method on it. And we just pass in the block observer class that we just created. Now that's all set up, let's go back. So before we code the actual functionality of the observer, I'm going to show you how to code a nice trait. We are going to create a new folder called traits inside the app folder. And here we're going to make a file called handles cache.php. Open with PHP text and define the namespace as app traits. And since this is a trait, we need to open with the trait keyword and just call it the same as the file handles cache. And all we need to do is make a very simple function, which I'm going to call handle cache. And it accepts one parameter, which is an array of the cache keys that we want. So all we do is loop over the keys. We will check if the key is not present in the cache. And finally, we will remove the item from the cache. Now we go back to our block observer. And now we just need to import the trait, which is done within the class. We'll set up a simple constructor. And let's set up a property so we can store the keys. In our example, we'll just have an array of the cache key blocks. Now what makes these observers unique is the fact that you can subscribe to certain events within Laravel. So when a new blog post is created, 
Larry will actually call this function and pass in the actual block, which we don't really need because we're just going to clear everything. So all we need to do is call the handle cache method that we just created. And because it's a trait, we can just call it like it's within this class because it actually is. And all we pass in is our cache keys. Now we have a bunch of other events like updated, deleted, restored or force deleted. The latter of two is when you have set up soft deletes, but Creator will do just fine for us now. So let's go back to Artist and Tinker. A few moments later. It looks like I made a typo. Let's check. Yep, I accidentally typed observer instead of observe. Let's try that again. Let's call the factory method on the block class and create a new blog post. Now when we refresh the page, it has automatically deleted it and we can try again. And it just works. If you have watched this far into the video, thank you very much. Other things you can do to speed up the load. And tomorrow we are going to set up this blog page with pagination. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you annihilate the subscribe button, smash the like button and all that. Leave a comment down below. I love to see when people do that. See you next time.